Hey, what's up, my coinaholics? I haven't used that in a while, but yeah, now we're back to using it. Uh, it's pretty... Uh, <clears throat> I think that if we're all fans, fans of the hobby in, in any capacity, we are true, genuine coinaholics. Um, and myself included, you know, I'm, I'm a student of the game. I'm never would I consider to be any better than anyone else. Um, that would be short-sighted because I'm always constantly learning. I'm not pretending, you know, that because I've been in the hobby for, um, geez, since, um, 1996. So was, uh, 28 years or something like that. That it doesn't make me more knowledgeable than the next guy. But, however, I could share some of what I feel like is, uh, is good information that, that'll help us kind of um, uh, set the stage of where we want to be in our collecting desires. Uh, I hope that makes sense. Um, some people, generally, when they get into coin collecting for the first time, um, or e even let alone precious metals investing and hoarding and stacking and things like that. Um, there's always that question, where do I start? What do I need to know? Um, and that was something that very early on, I, I was having a hard time. E even when I had things like the Red Book Price Guide, uh, which if you don't own one of these and you're just now getting into the hobby, um, it's a, it's a travesty. Um. This particular book is um, an invaluable resource for the information it holds, not necessarily the prices. Um, and that's why I have it. Um, my wife, um, who is my, my biggest uh, teammate, my advocate, um, we, we are truly a team in this great hobby. Um, you know, she, she said, hey, let's do something different. Uh, I'm, a, I'm going to choose five random U.S. coins. I'm going to go through this book. And she actually went through all the trouble of doing all of the, um, the photo editing and setting it up for me. Um, you know, the way that, that I personally like to, to do it. And I'm like, wait a minute, I don't normally do blue letters uh, <laughs> for, for the titling. And it's, it's exactly like it, it, it reads, five random U.S. coins. My personal opinion, do I invest, sell, or hold these coins? Now, it's... Um, I'm not saying it's the blind leading the blind here. Um, they, there are certain things that work, um, you know, because me, I, again, I'm a student of the game. I'm a purist. I'm what they call a purist numismatist. Um, I would much rather personally prefer coins that are raw than graded. All right, that's just me. Uh, I like to plug in holes into all sorts of albums. But, you know, having graded coins, yeah, they, there is no indictment against that. You know, it's like, that, that's fine. They, they're, they're investable. They're easy to sell when it comes time to it because, you know, the grade is already stated on the label. All right. So here we are, five random U.S. coins, invest, sell, and hold. So uh, just to let you guys know, I do not know what these five coins are. Again, my wife set this all up last night. Here we are on a uh, balmy Tuesday morning, and we're going to talk a little bit about these five coins here today. Um, so thank you for joining in. I don't know how she had it set up. She just kind of played around with my last uh, project I had. Uh, oh, so I, I have my uh, whatnot still on here. Uh, so I saw on the platform whatnot. Uh, I use that supplemental to things like eBay and selling on Facebook and things like that. It's one of my favorite up and coming, growing each and every single week uh, live selling platforms. Uh, they call it live auction. Um, and, uh, you know, I wanted to let you guys know that I do a show every Friday, um, that covers a wide span of different things, uh, from us type coins, bullion currency. And what I failed to mention in here is we also do world coins as well of all types. Um, so come on by on Friday, 5 PM Pacific, 8 PM Eastern. If you're not yet signed up on the platform, I would say, what are you waiting for? But you know, again, it's all preference. Some people are old school. They're like, oh, I just want to, you know, stay with eBay or whatever. Um, but I'm telling you, I, I kind of felt that way, but I needed an outlet where I could do live sales for myself. So you can join today using my referral link. I'll have it down below in the description box. And I might even have it tagged or pinned 
in the comments section. Uh, you'll receive $15 on me to spend on whatever you choose, okay? And what's also cool is that the uh, the folks at Whatnot, they are looking for new spirited sellers as well. So if you are currently selling on eBay and you want to kind of double that up with something that, uh, that could really help you cook with sales, man, joining Whatnot could possibly be that option. Um, and I also have a referral link for selling as well that's down below in the description box. Um, and come join. Come join the family. And uh, it's a very easy, intuitive system uh, that they use to get the whole live auction thing started. And, you know, you could set up your stream the same day, sell stuff, get it out of your house. If you're looking to make money right away, it's a great way of doing it as opposed to using eBay where you have to wait sometimes five to seven days. Could be longer than that if you do a buy now listing. So, um Come on by. I'll be waiting for you. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, okay. Uh, so, yeah, this is actually, let me do this. I'm going to put my photo right in between the two coins. So that way, um, you know, we can see uh, see the photo a little bit better. All right. Um, so there you go. So what we have here, uh, it's actually one of my favorite coins. And it's a very... Uh, it's a very limited short series. Uh, obviously, it spans three years. Um, uh, more appropriately, it spans two years because in 1856, uh, the Flying Eagle uh, pattern was actually produced in proof. Um, and not a whole lot of them were made. I believe somewhere north of 50,000 pieces were produced um, in proof. Uh, so they didn't make any... Um, business strike coins to speak of for 1856 so that effectively makes 1857 for the flying eagle the first date of business strike coinage um, now i'm gonna go and, and give you a little bit more data i feel like you guys deserve it um so for the flying eagle um there were a total no i take that back holy crap the 1856 proof uh, there were only 2,000 minted, all right? So, yeah, that, that's, um, that's nothing. Uh, that, that, that's as uh, scarce as any other proof coin in any other earlier date of um, type coin. Uh, so only 2,000 are made. A lot of them are like 20, 30, 40, $50,000 coins. Um, this was the first attempt by the U.S. Mint to convert from what was a very expensive to produce a large cent denomination um, which is still one cent but you know they were producing half cents too which contained you know in theory half a cent worth of copper all right because that's how they did things back in the day it's whatever the intrinsic value of the metal is is the overall value based off of the face value of what was in there um so by the time 1857 rolled around, which is the last date, there was a little overlap here. The large cent actually was costly to produce and they needed to find another way to drop the cost. Does that all sound familiar? It's kind of like what we're dealing with today where uh, a Lincoln cent, you know, costs like four or five cents you know, to produce these days. It just seems like a waste of money to do. Um, so this was their attempt. Um, this was kind of like the first iteration of what we call the small cent. Um, you know, because this coin right here, if you were going to stack 2024 Lincoln cent on top of it, it would be the same diameter. It's the same overall. Now these coins, they call them uh, white cents because they're also copper and nickel. They were a much lighter color and they were fatter too. Um, but... Overall, these coins are very pretty. Uh, 17,450,000 were produced. They are quite affordable in grades going up to about VF30. It's when you get beyond that point where you have coins that are that show more better details. Um, I happen to know like XF40, 45 coins. You're going to end up spending anywhere from $1 to $200 on those examples. And these things have gotten a lot more 
um, a lot more attention these days because of the varieties that are being found, especially on the 1857 date. Um, there's a, a really notable overdate, um, an eight over seven. That's very expensive. There's a couple of multi-denominational clashes, die clashes, where uh, these coins were clashed um, with a um, uh, with with other coins like a fifty cent seated liberty, a twenty five cent seated liberty, and I think the other one's a twenty dollar liberty. Um, so they're all very very collectible and very expensive, especially higher grade specimens. But the coin itself is actually very classical. Um, it, it's it's one of the few coins where they actually highlighted the eagle as being the obverse image, whereas normally those would be on the reverse. Um, and because of that, this makes it a truly um, kind of very limited um, type coin. You know, it, it's right up there with the 43 seal set as far as how special it is to a collector. But these days it's getting a little bit harder to find an affordable higher grade specimen. Um, 1857 is a little bit better than 1858 as far as date is concerned. Um, there were 24 and a half million 1858s that were produced and they all came with small and large letter variants. Um, I would say these are very investable uh, in my opinion. Now the ones that are more investable are gonna be the higher graded pieces. Um, uh, you know, the question's going to be, would I buy one of these graded if I wanted some reassurance of, say, a mint state grade? Probably, you know. It's getting to that point where if you needed this for a type collection, um, but you're not personally happy with owning a graded coin, because, again, you're like me. You want to press that coin into an album. You know, you could always buy a graded coin and crack it out. You know, but it's going to reassure you that you have like an honest original coin that's never been clean, that's never been a ground, things like that. Um, so, the, yeah, I mean, the Flying Eagle scent, and especially the 1857, which is my favorite date out of the two, because, again, the variety factor, there's just more to look for for this date. So, pretty cool choice there. Good job, wifey. I like that one. Uh, let's see, the next coin that we have here. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, uh, I, I mean, you know, the, this is uh, pretty cool. Um, this is a 1924, what they call St. Gaudens Double Eagle. It has a face value of $20, all right? This is the largest uh, circulating business strike gold coin, um, kind of, uh, that they did release. Um, you know, as, as some would say, well, that's that's incorrect because they also did... A $50 Panama Pacific commemorative and all this other stuff. I'm like, well, sure, I'll give you that. Um, but as far as like um, a consistent series where they minted, you know, a lot of them going all the way up to um, uh, 1933, uh, you know, where they uh, essentially did away with uh, with gold coins being an ounce of actual capable uh, people. Um, you know, that's the, I forgot the name of the act, but you know, 1933 St. God's coins were illegal to own. Um, you know, and then, you know, rich, rich, you know, dignitaries like, uh, the King of Peru, uh, King of Peru, right? Um, yeah, I think that's his name. Uh, you know, they, they're like one of the only people for the longest time that was able to own a 33 St. God's. But the reason why I kind of chuckled at this one, it's the 1924, um, my wife has the same coin in a, uh, OGH mid state 64 grade. It's a very pretty coin. Um, these are investable all day long. Um, you know, the, the, the big chasers out of St. God's obviously is like the wire rim and the high relief and all that stuff. But I'd say, you know, for, for a few of the dates, uh, out there, uh, there are a number of, some of the more higher mintage common ones 1924 is one of those you could get you could get a piece um and these are generally going to trade for a little bit above melt value uh when it comes to like exactly one ounce of gold um you know you could get like like my wife's coin is a mint state 64 you know it's somewhere in that 2400 to 2500 dollar range it's not too far above and beyond melt value now 
where things get really expensive with these is I think mid state 66 because those particular coins end up being worth uh, well beyond three thousand dollars um, you know I think 66 some of the, some of the dates some of the common dates are like four to five thousand dollars you know and at that point it's really up to you if you wanted to kind of test that but if you wanted a coin that's a stand the test of time you know and keep in mind that in today's gold eagle kind of um, production from the u.s mint they're using the saint gaudens design augustus saint gaudens the the designer of this coin knocked this thing out of the park um and you know it's it's stood the test of time it's right up there with um you know like the mercury dime the walking liberty half dollar design you know these are all kind of like trendy progressive designs um, that that wear very well um, in people's collections and it's going to continue to be the one of the most popular to own so if you have the opportunity you got a, you know twenty five hundred dollars to spend then this would be the one right here you know um, I, I would say that this is going to be money well spent at the end of the day uh, Okay, <laughs> I was not expecting this because I don't think, well, I have a 2021 red book and I know for sure that this coin is not in there. <laughs> so the the men had brought back the Morgan and Peace Dollar um, design in 2021 to commemorate the 100 year anniversary of the changeover from the Morgan design in 1921 to the Peace design, which kind of made sense. Um, the, the 2021 uh, re-release of the Peace of Morgan Dollars are actually, and, and we'll probably end up talking about these in some separate video, they, they are being scooped up in the marketplace, the actual raw coins in the or, original government packaging. They're starting to tick up a little bit, and uh, there's not a lot of people paying particular close attention to them. Um, but, you know, maybe once I talk about it, it might be a different story, but... Getting back into this, in 2021, they never produced a reverse proof version of either the Morgan or the Peace Dollar. Two years later, there you go. They had produced and released a two coin set uh, that, you know, today is like $180, $190, you know, two coin set if you bought it raw in the original government packaging. I think the coins look incredibly stunning. Um, a good fair amount of the coins did grade out a proof 70. So finding a proof 70 specimen in a PCGS or NGC slab is really not going to be all that hard. There's even a good amount of CAC G graded coins as well of this. Now, here's where I'm kind of torn because I was at the onset of the announcement that, that the Mint was going to produce a reverse proof version of both the Morgan and Peace Dollars for 2023, I was like, I'm all in, you know, I want two or three sets of these things. I have one sitting in the closet over here. Um, but I kind of, at that point, made a decision to, to be in more of a refusal to buy any more of them. And here's the main reason why. The Mint also, within moments of releasing this, they have made the announcement that they were going to reproduce this in 2024. So it is on the release schedule for this year. And I thought it was going to be a one-time release. That's just going to be a one-year shot. Um, they've made it known that the Peace of Morgan are going to be a standard regular annual release every year. Um, and, it, you know, as part of that, it's going to be the uncirculated, the regular proofs, and the reverse proofs are going to be part of the standard release schedule each and every single year. So I was, needless to say, bummed for sure that this was going to be a continual release. And I was like, man, that kind of like loses the specialness of this. Sure, it's the first year that they've done it. And the quality is well above average. So we don't have to worry about, you know, 10 years later on down the line. Like, hey, do you remember the 2023 reverse proof Morgan in peace boy they were low mintage no they're gonna be the same mintage each and every single year um I would say these uh these right now if if you um, <coughs> um I certainly wouldn't buy any of these 
Uh, if it were me, um, knowing what I know about, you know, the, the future releases of 2024, 25, the same thing, same narrative. They're all struck in San Francisco. Um, it's, it's either going to be a sell or a hold, right? You know, and then, you know, w w what cr criteria do I use to choose either or? This is a really tough one because it's a new release. You know, it's barely a year old. Um, but, you know, for those of you that, that own it and bought it from the U.S. Mint, I would say it's a hold. Um, if you bought a buttload of these, you know, and you have the capability of buying a bunch of them, I'd probably say sell some of them. Um, they, it wouldn't make any sense to really hold on to them. Um, and then while there's only 2023s currently out right now, this is kind of like where it's going to be at its peak, right? Um, because there's only this one date, this one year of reverse proofs. And if you're going to sell it, sell it now, you know, because once that 2024 hits the ground, uh, it's going to be all over. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, um, we might see these retrace a little bit, about 10%, maybe more. I don't know. Um, there's just going to be more and more of them with different dates. That's going to be, um, you know, uh, out there. So that's my personal opinion, thought. Um, kudos to the wifey for throwing in something that's a, a little bit controversial, uh, to say the least, um, uh, because really I, I have not the best um, uh, kind of like words for, to describe this particular coin uh oh okay this is pretty cool i i like these and i think um you know back when i first started collecting these coins right here they were uh they were a little bit more affordable uh it, it's i can't really say that today um they call these trines these are three cent silvers not to be confused with the three cent nickels now the particular date that my wife chose was 1853 uh, the most plentiful date is actually 1852, so it's only a year off. So how does this one compare uh, to the 1852? Let me see what the... Um, I'm like, I can't even find it. I'm sitting here looking through the nickel pages and, you know. <laughs> there we go. All right, so the three cent silvers... Um, 1852, 18.6 million were made, all right, so it's very plentiful. Coming in at a close second, 1853 with 11.4 million. So uh, these coins are affordable and low grades, um, and you have to be careful with these, uh, especially if you're putting them in an album because they are razor thin. They actually call these uh, fish scales, much like they do the five cents silver half dimes uh, because they're small and very thin. Um, there's been an instance where I've pressed a three cents silver into a Dansko 2020 album and you can actually feel the flex. You know, the coin flexes and it turns into a little bowl inside of that hole, um, which is unfortunate because, you know, they, they, uh, they're so razor thin that they bend very easily. Um, these coins they here are, are very small. Um, are they as popular as some of the bigger U.S. type coins today? Probably not. Um, but they, there's no doubt that it is probably um, right up there with the 20 cent silver as being the two most popular oddball denominations. I think this one's even more popular, I would say, um, than a few of the, um, the, the half cent coppers uh like the braided hair and um you know possibly the classic head uh just for what it is um so the mint when they produce these um they did do modifications through the years it went from 1851 which is the first date to 1873 uh which was a proof only uh issue so they did these and they actually did a few modifications over the years. Um, they, there's actually a type one, type two, and type three. This is a type one. Type two, they added a couple lines around the whole star perimeter. And then type three, it was just one line, I believe. Uh, I might be wrong on that, but um, yeah, they, they did modify the star. That The actual type two looks very pretty with the, the character lines that go around the star. Um, 
uh, the, these are very investable in my opinion, uh, but I probably just would buy one. And there's there's the one coin that we have to bring up, the 1851O, which is the only coin that bears a physical mint mark on it of all of the three cent silvers. Now, the 1853, this one right here is presentable because it's got a really pretty pastel kind of toning, a lot of steel blue that converts into like that pinkish magenta color. Um, and then little hints of like gold, all right, which is like, it's the perfect kind of like changeover in color from one to the other. Now this, this one right here, um, I, you know, all the coins thus far, looks like they've all, they're all graded. So I think my wife, you know, found some graded specimens and, you know, did a little photo magic, um, to pair, pair them up here. Um, you know, I taught her well. And, uh, yeah, I, I would probably lean more toward uh, buying a higher grade specimen of this. And then, you know, just um, if I needed something for an album, I'll buy one raw. Uh, keep in mind, a lot of these do are clean uh, when they're raw out there. I would imagine that a lot of the pieces that exist today um, that are not in holders, I would say a lot of them are clean. Um, you know, and these things are easily lost. So the... Uh, um, survival rate is extremely low on these coins. Uh, but yeah, I, I, this is one of my favorite series. Um, it just, it, even to this day, even though the prices have gone up quite a bit, it doesn't have quite the love as a lot of the other, you know, denominations do. And, you know, kind of the backstory of why this three cent denomination even exists has everything to do with like postage, uh, change and, and all that it, it's it's kind of weird as you know it's a, it's a weird reason why that they even produce this coin all right we got one more i think uh <laughs> okay um this one is in the red book um this was i believe the first um first attempt of a convex concave coin um and this is the 2014 Hall of Fame baseball commemorative. Um, they produced them in uh, copper nickel clad, which is the 50 cent denomination. The $1 type, which is what you see here, they made an uncirculated and proof. This one's the proof. And these are 90% silver. If I'm, yeah, 90% silver. Uh, and they even made a gold one too, if, uh, if you got some deeper pockets. But I like these. I don't own one. Um, some of them are kind of expensive, especially in perfect proof 70, but that would be the one that me personally, I would get now, um, uh, the, the actual coins, they did make quite a few of them. Uh, they were very popular when they were released from the U S mint. Um, a lot of people were especially captivated by the curved design of the coin uh, to really mimic the, the texture and the 3D appeal of a baseball um, and the catcher's mitt too because catcher's mitt it's, um, it's um, deep on the inside where the palm is. Um, so they did, it, they did a really great job here. They did a really great job for not putting like the names of specific baseball players. I thought they would put like a Babe Ruth or something like that on there. Um, but yeah, it's a very clean, well-executed design. It didn't need much. You know, you got the, um, the stitching on the reverse United States of America. It says $1 on there. I think this is like, this is going to be a coin that will age gracefully um, and we, we all have kind of like our, you know, our doubts about, um, modern commemoratives, like, you know, that not all of them fit collector's hands and, you know, a lot of people, more people hate them than they do like them. Um, but this particular one right here, that if you're able to pick up a reasonably priced graded example, uh, or, you know, if you want one that's in the original government packaging, you can pick one up for under 50 bucks, I would imagine. Um, but yeah, I think this one would really look awesome in a, a um, like a, a black NGC core um, Proof 70 holder. I think it would look just dynamite. So yeah, that that is a pretty cool inclusion um, uh, to round out the five random coins. Uh, thanks again to my wife, Stacy. I love you for, uh, for doing this. Uh, really got me thinking on a few of these and um, hopefully it, it's not meant to like sway your guys's opinion on any of these coins 
um, but I wanted to talk up the highlights, and if there was any lowlights, we'd certainly address those as well, you know. Uh, information provided in this video is for educational use only, not financial advice, as always. Okay, even in this video, it still applies. Um, please do collect in or grade your coins responsibly. Wow, 30 minutes. I'm so sorry to take your guys' time on this one. Um, one last little bit here. Uh, again, thank you guys for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I am your host, Sean, with Blue Ridge Silverhound. Hopefully you got a little bit of educational feedback and content from this one. It was a lot of fun, something new and different. And uh, we'll be sure to do more of them in the future. All right, you guys take care. Enjoy the hobby, and I'll see you next time.